Hello everyone, I'm going to be telling you about center of mass and stability today. Um, I'll actually start this lesson with a, with a video which I'm going to put on the description, okay? It's just a guy um, actually doing the experiment that you see on the, on the picture. So um, it's showing you how, having knowledge about center of mass, how you can get a stable or a stable system, I was going to say stable object, a whole stable system just like this one uh, even if it looks like it's not going to work so even if it looks like the forks for example are going to fall so it uses the forks, the quark, the match and the glass and you're, you're going to see it working okay now for me to know about the stability of an object or for me to be able to know if an object is uh, going to be stable or not not only I need to look at yeah the, the turning effect so the moments I need to know about center of mass, okay? And center of mass, by definition, oh, it can be called center of gravity as well, by the way, by definition is going to be the single point where all the weight of an object can be thought to be. So you can just simply say, okay, all the weight is being acted on upon this point, okay? So it's a point which a single force on the body has no turning effect. And if you don't quite understand the second part, just look here in this picture. I have this basket and my basket can move around, okay? Can go here in a kind of uh, oscillation motion. And you can see that the turning effect is none here in the center of mass. Nothing is happening really. It's still, you know, uh, the force is still going down, okay? Or, you know, attracting it towards the ground. Now, if you have a symmetrical object, it's easy to find the center of mass. What you need to do is the center of mass is going to be along the lines of symmetry or the axis of symmetry. So you need to find them. And when they meet, that's where the center of mass is going to be. So for example here, I have this, oh, this is obviously all imagining that they are homogeneous objects, okay? So they are all made of the same and the density is the same throughout. So he, for example here, I have this um, rectangle, one axis of symmetry, one ax uh, second axis of symmetry, they meet here, that's the center of mass. The same here with this triangle, okay? And then if you do not have um, an object that is symmetrical, what you can do is just keep testing it, okay? And you will see, for example, in a video, I think the guy is doing that, he kind of tests more or less where they are going to meet or where uh, things should be What you need to do for an object to be um, stable or as stable as possible. Now, if you look at all these pictures, you may see that if the center of mass is acting, so if the force is acting, um, by the way, all, none of these pictures are mine. Uh, if the center of mass is working uh, within the base of the object, here it is, okay, or uh, before uh, within the pivot, you can see that the object is stable, it's not toppling over. But once it comes out of the base, look, the axis where the center of mass is uh, acting on is coming out of the base, okay, it's passing through the pivot, uh, then the object is going to topple over, okay? So that means that we can have equilibrium that is stable and unstable. I'll go more on the topple over, but I'm going to tell you about situations like these ones, okay? So that means when I have an object, it can be in a state of equilibrium, but it could be a stable state of equilibrium, which uh, means that the object is going to return to the original position or the equilibrium position whenever it is displaced. Something like that basket, for example, or something like the table, that one that it didn't go, uh, you know, that went back to the equilibrium state. And normally, this is going to happen when the object center of mass is di directly below and in line with the point of support. Okay, so for example, with the basket, the support was on top of the basket, and then I had my, the center of mass of the basket. Whatever I do, it didn't matter how hard I would swing that basket, it would return to equilibrium, okay? Now, if the object's center of mass is directly above the point of support, then we can get unstable equilibrium. So it means that it is in equilibrium, but it can easily come out of that state, okay? 
So once the object is displaced and released, the weight will act to turn the object further from the equilibrium position, okay? So as an example in here, I have stable and unstable equilibrium, the basket, as I just told you, and an example of an unstable equilibrium is this one, where you're going to have um, a beam, you have the force of the support of the beam in showing in blue, um, exactly the same size, so the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction, I have um, the weight of the beam, and while on the basket, if I swing the basket, it will eventually um, go and return to the equilibrium position. The other one, um, it doesn't necessarily happen, you know. If I just uh, make a force in one of the sides, you know that that system is going to collapse. So it's in equilibrium at that point, but if I apply an extra force into that system, it will uh, leave the equilibrium position, okay? Now, tilting and toppling over, more on that stuff that I told you. So, we know already about the center of mass and not coming out of the basis of the object, but let's just think about the uh, physics of it, okay? So, I have here a point P, okay, that's the pivot, and then uh, I have a force being applied in there, okay? And if you remember about moments, you know that um, a moment of a force is going to be the force times the perpendicular distance. So the force provided is F times D, the distance, the perpendicular distance uh, from the pivot, okay? And the weight now, so in here, this force, is going to provide the opposite moment, okay? The anti-clockwise moment, okay? And the, the force is W, so that's why I have W, and then the distance uh, to the pivot, the perpendicular distance to the pivot, is the base divided by 2. That's going to be the distance between the weight to the pivot point, okay? So, if I get that the force times the distance, so my clockwise moment is bigger, then the weight times the base divided by 2, so my anti-clockwise moment, the object tilts, okay? So I can have two ways of looking at tilting and toppling over. One is by looking if the line of action of the weight of the center of mass is passing beyond the pivot. The other one is by looking at the physics of it. You know from previous videos that the condition for me to have equilibrium is to have the clockwise and the anti-clockwise moment to be balanced. If they are not, then my object is going to tilt, okay? I could have even the object applying a force, but then this would be smaller, so FD would be smaller than, than the weight times the base over 2, and I would know that my object would return to the original position, okay? So knowing all this physics, I can increase the stability of an object, okay? There are two things that I can do. I can make the base as wide as possible, because the bigger the base, uh, the bigger than the moment of the anti-clockwise moment, for example, in the example before, or then the more I would have to tilt an object for it to actually have the line of action of the center of mass to leave the pivot or the base, so that's one way. I can also make the center of mass as low as possible, and it, this is exactly for the same reason. If my center of mass is as low as possible, it will take me to tilt the object even more to a higher angle for me to get that the line of action of the center of mass goes beyond the base, okay? So an object will topple over if the line of action of the weight is outside the base and pass beyond the pivot, or then you can think that an object will topple over if the resultant moment about its point, uh, turning point is not zero, okay? So if the principle of moments is not obeyed. So you have here two ways of figuring out if an object will topple over or not, and you know how to increase the stability of that object, okay? Now, <coughs> just to finish this off, I'm going to show you um, an example in here where I have a big truck, I have the weight in blue showing going directly downwards, and I have two supports, X and Y. You can see that X is bigger than Y, okay? and this weight is on a slope of an angle uh, theta and there is a friction from the tires which are uh, opposite to the inclination of the slope, okay? So if I think in terms of forces in the horizontal and vertical components, then my weight 
uh, is going to be now my weight in x so the component horizontal component of a uh, the weight is going to be equal to friction so that means that w the sine of theta because i want this component in here sorry i want this one the um, yeah i want that one so that's the friction that's the weight yeah and that's the one that i want sorry is is that one but it's here so this is theta that's theta again so i want this component this component and this component they need to be the same okay and in terms of vertical components it means that my weight needs to be equal to the adding of the supporting x and the supporting y now if because i want the horizontal component i want these sides okay so the angle is here so i want the cosine of the angle so the weight times the cosine of the angle equals the supporting x plus the supporting y now as you can see from the picture it doesn't look like the weight in the horizontal component the weight sine of theta is equal to the friction but we are not figuring out here the calculations we don't have the numbers we cannot do it but you know that the line of action of the weight is not passing beyond the pivot so in principle i could have um that um the the object would not topple over okay now of course if you want to be sure you should do the calculations we don't have values in here but you should do the calculations it could even be that the drawing is just not ideal okay so i hope it makes sense about the um, center of mass instability so i gave you two ways for you to figuring out if an object is going to topple over or not one of them is a little bit more scientific and then uh, that one is going to give you better results really if you want to do the calculations but if you don't have the calculations you can start like this but you can only take an, um, a conclusion by looking at the drawings really in this case the weight of the um, the line of action of the weight is not passing beyond the pivot okay so i hope that helped and i'll go on equilibrium rules in another lesson and take care bye